And you you were vlogging at um at the show on Tuesday too. So like you had you had somebody out there vlogging filming you. Uh, Kennard was. Well, Kennard was doing it with his phone because I shit. I, I got to get used to bringing the gimbal and having the phone. Yeah. So I was just like, dude, just get a little footage and the shit he sent me. The footage I got to find out how I can rotate the. Oh, it was what landscape versus whatever. Well, he the shot other. it in landscape, yeah. but it's in my phone as uh, horizontal or as vertical, I guess. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying so. What's your goal with all this? Because you're churning out a lot of content. Man, creating an ecosystem. I mean, that's the mm -hmm. wave, man. You can't really. You got to build an audience, bro. Right. You know, you, you like how else are you supposed to build a goddamn audience? <laughs> just flood them. <laughs> like, with I, I mean, I just want them to see me. Mm. I want people to get to know me. You know what I mean? I, you know, so I'm I'm working shit. You know. Yeah, and, that's it's good to hear, man. Because I I don't know. You just kind of made a shift. And welcome back, by the way, as well. Oh, I should thanks. welcome hey, you back guys, officially back to the again. podcast. Hot brother and Lavar Walker. Wow, man, it's good to be here. We're back dude. out here. Are these your waters? Are you selling waters? Yeah, these are water. These are. I this love is Fontis, my man. This is dope. A lot's changed since you. Um, so is this like last... part of your merchandise? Are you on the road? Well, yeah, this I, this is exclusively for hot breath guests right now. Oh, dope. but I collaborated with Fontis, their local spring water up in the Blue Ridge Mountains yeah. of Georgia. Right. So uh, they do custom labels and like the big office water coolers and they do coffee now. You definitely got to get you some gum since this is Hot Breath Podcast. Yeah, I was thinking that or Hot Breath Mints. Yeah. I just haven't uh, I just haven't yet. That's what's up, man. Put this on silent. I want to make sure I completely yeah, I'm gonna, focus on the bar walker. Yeah, here. I'm about to I'm about to put I'm a airplane mode on my log. shit too. But yeah, so that, that water's for you. Yeah, you did episode six, man. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> and what episode are you on now? I'm in the 130s now. <laughs> Jesus, man. That's been a minute. <laughs> yeah, dude. Because that was when I did Last Comic Standing. That was back when I interviewed everybody from Atlanta who was on Last Comic Standing. Wow, man. That is crazy. Look at you now. You're early. Man, you look like, at you, man. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You see, you thought I, I knew you thought I was going to be late. Dude, uh -uh. man. The, I know you was like, fuck, I know he's going to be about 130. <laughs> nah, man. Yeah, the first time the first time around we were trying to do the interview, you you hit me up like ten minutes after we were supposed to meet, like, oh man, I got a flat tire. I, I did. Was like, I what? really did. I was having problems with my shit. But man. you called me late to tell me you had a flat. Oh, it was after the time. It was after God the time. damn, dude. I was so disrespectful, <laughs> man. I'm sorry. Man. I love how you still stuck to the story. No, I was late. <laughs> I was late. But, I'm telling you, bro. You know, I, I really did have a c trouble with my car. My car was messing up, you know, mainly man. it just it wouldn't get out of the driveway on time. My you know how bag, cars be. Man. Hey. Nah, hey. I'm sorry, bro. Nah, man. It's all good, man. I'm sorry. I was on probably some asshole shit at that time. Like, that was something we touched shit. on in the interview. I ain't doing this shit. I might have I might have been <laughs> on some dickhead shit or something, man. Just, you know. We got the bat phone. We we interviewed at my classroom last time, and now we're in my classroom again. So I don't know what's the deal with the phone, but um This is where you teach to, the comedy class. This is where I teach my comedy class at. Yeah, yeah. And they all sit at the table and learn? We'll all sit at the table and I have a PowerPoint up here. And then they'll perform in the corner. Oh wow. So they'll perform and then we'll do like a writer's room feedback on each person's set. And yeah. then we'll go into a lesson for that That's week. That's dope, bro. Good yeah. shit, Joe. Hey now. Hey now. I'm proud of you, I man. I appreciate you, man. That's what's up, bro. That's what we talked about on the last one was just trying to find a way. You got to, bro. You know? Like, you know, with me and doing this content, and I have a daily podcast that I do, so mm -hmm. all the hot breathers out there, you can tune in and catch me every morning on the LeVar Walker Show. <laughs> it's available on Stitcher, iTunes, Pocket, everywhere. You can Google it and check me out and also check my daily vlog out. Just, what is it? What is it all? Is the daily vlog LeVar Walker show also? The daily vlog is well. My YouTube name is Escovar seventy seven. What kind of what? You I don't want to do that. Was, that was like <laughs> Escovar, I, dude. My channel like ten years old, bro. I got like <laughs> seventeen hundred subscribers, and I'm trying to <laughs> reinvent it. But I think I'm gonna take my content, put it on there, and put it on another page, Lavar TV, and just get them try to migrate them over. Yeah, you might Escobar. Seven, or can you edit the channel name? Fuck no. Bruh. I don't know why YouTube don't let you do that. I don't know, but Escobar 77 is not I know, who people bro. are going to be booking. 
I know. What does Escobar mean? That was just a, a name. I don't fucking know. I'm LeVar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I used to hear Nas <laughs> rapping about Escobar, you know, Pablo. <laughs> so I said, fuck it, I'm Escobar. You know what I mean? Like, but this was so long ago. This was some whack. This was super whack. Back when you were getting booed and it was terrible. <laughs> but it wasn't my comedy name. I just Yeah, yeah. You know, it was just some shit I threw up on YouTube at the time, you know? So what are you, what are you trying to do here? Like you, you get the podcast and now you're doing a daily vlog. What's well, your just what's a, your strategy here? Man? I mean, dude, I think like um uh putting out con I think content is key right now. Mm, okay. Um and I think you know, you just able to build an ecosystem. So if I go perform somewhere live, you know, or somebody, if they see me do an Instagram video, you know, they might Google me. And once they Google me, you know, they enter my world of YouTubes, IG, podcast, and just a way to give something to the fans, man. Just constantly giving you know what i mean have you been researching like what's most effective on social media and maybe what is more of a waste of time you've been looking into um, the, the analytical side of the well, return well my my number one site is instagram that's where mm. i get the most traffic um but it i don't think it's hurting to do youtube and do the podcast i mean i get like 170 listeners a episode on my podcast so you know, I, I just I started. I'm 32 episodes in. But that's every day. Like, every day. You're Yeah, that's almost just like a little radio show for you now. Pretty much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a way to just get hands on and mm -hmm. not really sitting back waiting for the man to say, yo, you got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just a way to work um, consistently. I think I overthink everything. And like I'm, try, I'm, I'm I trying mean, to make everything yeah, and perfect. I don't, like, like with me, man, fuck it. You you know what I'm saying? Like I think you should throw the shit out there. What yeah. like if you cause because I, I noticed like with IG and doing like a lot of social media shit, I was getting paralyzed in perfection. Yeah. So when you yeah. go to think analytics, posting at a certain time, doing all this shit, you don't you never do. And the doing is key. Consistency mm -hmm. is key. So I just want to grow my fan base, bro, and have a demand and let the world see my talent. And when you say consistency is key, are you posting a video at a certain time every day? Or no, like, I just I'm post that shit whenever I feel like it. Just sometimes you may do three a day, sometimes you may do yeah. zero. It's just whenever. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, if it's funny, you know, like I just did, I know I did a TI video and um, that one got, let me see. I got like 35,000 Followers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mom. I saw you bringing the T.I. back a little bit. Yeah, I, I brought them back. They, you know, yeah. they love the T.I. <laughs> Matter of fact, I did the video because all my fans was like, yo, look at T.I. I kept getting DM. I was like, all right, fuck it. Let me hit them with something. Right, 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 right. It did like 53,000 views. Um, and I only got 35,800 something followers. Yeah, it seems like you hit a new gear on Instagram. What did you switch up? Cause I mean I'm just more consistent. Just more bro. consistent. Yeah, and okay. I, and then I'm kind of honing in, looking at my analytics of what they like me to do, which is side by sides and shit like that. Oh, and of with, course, right. The Ti, which is an old ass bit I've been doing since I've been impersonating Ti since what 2005, four. You know what I mean? Since well, Escovar. Yeah. <laughs> So like I've been doing this motherfucker since oh four, like when I would just do the hat and the glasses and it was a big music cue bit. Yeah. And um shit, I you know, I took it from that to, you know, doing the voice and getting his inflections and just watching him. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, that was cool to I dissected your TI approach on the last one interview and you went into how Impersonating anyone is just about finding like a small trait and then exaggerating it. Yeah. So when Ti talks, you dig that? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta hold your lip a certain way, and you gotta let the words come out real slow. You mm -hmm. dig? <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's that's but it, Mister uh, Mister Tip. What happened with this drunk thing? Well, you know, first of all, I want to say that I accept full responsibility for anything that uh, happens in my life. But uh, in this particular instance, this was nothing more than a small thing to a giant. <laughs> uh, I was accosted and upheld, and, and, and for, for, for whatever reason, the, the, the security guard did not believe 
who I said I was. I am T.I. I'm very famous. Everybody knows me. He knows me. So I'm going to leave it at that. Rubber right band. now, I'm in a in a current situation with the judicial system and things of that nature, and we're <laughs> going to let the laws of the land handle that. <laughs> wild as the Taliban. Man, wild as the Taliban. Man. <laughs> so even in just thinking of what you're trying to build here, as a comedian, we all have different ideas, but it seems like your mode right now is just create as much as possible and just I want to create and daily, put that daily, shit out, daily. bro. I mean, where... where where are we right now in stand up? Think about it, bro. Mm. Think about it, it. It's almost like with social media and with the internet, you know, you you have tools and and it's given us tools and leverage to build a fan base at this point. You know, I've been doing stand up what 15 years, man. Yeah. And uh you know, you know I'm at the point where I want to grow my name and brand myself and so, you know, I'm selling tickets, shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're smart. People need to come see you for a reason. They need to come see you because you're funny. Everybody's funny. Everybody's funny, man. Have you seen traction? People that see you on social media come see you live? Yeah. And I've been getting recognized in the mall, like at the grocery store and really? shit. People are like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. some people are just stare. They won't say shit. But I kind of, my wife would pick up on that shit. It's like, LeVar, them people know you. <laughs> like, I don't want to say shit. So it's it's helping, bro. And you know, you realize with all this, like your podcast, you got a fucking radio show. You took it in your hands to mm -hmm. make your own opportunity to, you know, bring these interviews to light. You know, you, you took it in your hands. And technology has given us that power. Boom. Just like when I said, you don't need to move to LA. Remember on the last episode? I remember when you said that. Yeah. You don't. You don't have to move to you don't. LA. Think about it like right now. Who popping? Just you know, Jess Alaris just picked up on the on the rail show. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. she picked up from fucking social media, bro. Millions of followers. Millions of followers, and now she on national TV. She'd be on Fox in the fall. You know what I mean? She wasn't in LA living in the fucking car. <laughs> it's like those days are kind of over with, man. Like you could. You could blow up from fucking Idaho right now. All from social media. Your social media, internet, however you want to do it, man. Because even with YouTube, YouTube is the largest uh, television network on earth. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to look at it. They bigger than Fox, ABC, NBC, and CNN combined. With over one billion people that, that watch it every day or some shit like that, so... That's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. You were you mentioned um, you were mentioned people need to see you, and then I realized that that camera angle they could really only see you, and I wanted to make sure that they got my oh they my pearly see you. face in there. Oh yeah. So now we out here because you know we post these on YouTube and then social media as well and LinkedIn and all that jazz. So we out here trying to make moves. Is this something in front of? Is something on your screen? Where? It look like something on the screen because it look like something is right, right here. Hold on, let me see. I think it's something. I th oh, there's a line that shows that it's level. Oh, oh, okay. See that? Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that just lets you know that it's level and all that. Okay. Cool stuff. <laughs> Nothing but the best. So in thinking of you still being based out of Atlanta and right. this, the opportunities you're finding, most recently you did this movie. With, yeah, I'm talking Drew. about Little Rel. Yeah, you did Uncle Drew. Uncle Drew. I played a Foot Locker manager. How'd that even all pop off? Man, I was sitting on my couch one day because um, I'm not <laughs> working in the pharmacy as much no more. Oh, um, you're you're taking one kind of step well, in the comedy yeah, more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's more saturated in the pharmacy world. than you know, it's like I, I got to decide. So fuck it, you know. Uh, so I'm sitting on my couch. I got a call from a little real like 2.30 in the morning. Um, I don't know what time that was, L.A. time, but he was like, yeah, fam. You know, shibbity dobo. You know how you talk. Yeah, fam. <laughs> <coughs> I'm shooting this movie, Joe. This Uncle Drew movie, and and they they need somebody to teach the players how to act like old men. So I was like, all right, shit. I love to do that shit. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? So all right, fam. So people gonna hit you up. So I got an email. Uh, went and had a meeting with the writer 
and a director, shout out to Jay Longino and Charles Stone. Sat down, met with them, uh, went over everything and uh, got a call from the executive producer the next day. And they hired me initially as the comedy consultant for the film. So I helped to punch up the script, added a little oh, couple lines, nice. little funnies, hit them with some funny. Yeah. With some of the lines y'all hear in the film, some shit, I was like, yo, tell them say that, this, that, whatever. And then that led to my little tiny part of playing uh, Marty, the Foot Locker manager. So are you on set and they do a scene and then you're like, oh, this could be funny if they added Yeah, this. like before we, before we go to shoot or whatever, they, they send me a script every day because Throughout the movie, the script is getting updated literally every day. Right. Every day you get a new script, just, you know, taking notes. I would, like, present notes and what I thought would work and, you know, some some things they would reject and some they would accept. And, you know, we just kept it moving. So mm -hmm. I got to collaborate and be on set and see all the hard work that it takes uh, to shoot a film. And it's a lot of patience. It's a lot of sitting and waiting. You know? Hurry up and wait. Yeah, it's a Common lot of term. that shit. It's yeah. a lot of that shit. But this is a studio movie, and they really fed us. The food was fucking amazing, bro. <laughs> it was food every fucking day, like morning to night, just tents of food, like steaks and yep. all kind of just wonderful cuisine. Like, it was great. It was Real great. food. I, I Not gained craft weight. service chips. I was damn near 200 pounds by the end of that movie, man. Just from that? I was eating that shit, man. Because you get bored. Like, if you sitting on set, boy, you just go eat. Right. Because it's laid out, man. Yeah, yeah. So I had I lost weight. Now I'm down to like 178, but I was like 196. I picked up. Oh, what'd you cut out? Um, Cut back on a lot of sugar drinks. Um, Start counting my calories. And that shit, you know, just fell off. Yeah. I'm pumping up a little bit. I'm pumping I think up. I'm, yeah, I think I'm going back up in my way just a tad bit because I've been drinking liquor and shit and just chilling. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But I got to watch it. I'm going to get back on it. You know what I mean? Because my thighs and shit, I was getting hips. I had a fat ass. <laughs> Did you say Kevin Hart, like, squeezed yeah, your belly one yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. He squeezed my belly. He said, Var, <laughs> Var, look, Var, this is disgusting, Var. <laughs> look, no, no, no. <laughs> like he squeezed my shit and looked looked me in my eye. <laughs> Var, what is what is this, Var? It's disgusting. You dis you disgust me, Var. Like I'm like fuck. I gotta tighten this shit up. So I got on the scale. I'm like fuck this. My thighs were starting to rub. Yeah. And it's not like I'm sloppy. Like you know what I'm saying. I guess I could hold my weight cool, but it was like yo, I got I gotta tighten this shit up. I got a son, man. I don't want to have a heart attack out here, no shit. Yeah, you know I mean? has having a kid totally like changed your drive and work ethic and all that? Yeah, because now, you know, especially with stand-up, I don't want to, even though it would be very easy for me to quit, what message would I be telling my son? Mm. Give up on your dreams. So it's like I have to make this. I will make this shit happen. Mm -hmm. I will. Like no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Are you clear on where you want to end up? Yes. Where do you want to end up? Uh, the greatest comedian of all time. Word? Yeah. Selling out stadiums, touring, movies, all that shit. Hmm. Yes, that's where I want to end. The greatest comedian of all of time. Of all time. Wow. Yeah. That's Hollywood calling right now. I hear him. <laughs> <laughs> shit. So what's cool, let's go, let's go back to Uncle Drew a little bit because it's crazy you... You get a call in the middle of the night, hey, you might be in the whoop de whoop, whatever Laurel impression you did yeah. that I can't do because it'll yeah. be racist. Shoopity double. By, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> TSA. Yeah. So he calls you, and then you're in a meeting with like the producer and the director. Yeah. Like the next, like pretty much. Yeah, next day. The next day. Yeah. What is What goes down in that meeting? What do they say to you? What is the. Uh, dude, we ate. We had a good dinner at the, uh, what was it? the Buckhead Diner, um, I think they just feel you out. You know what I mean? Right, to just right, right. see if they even want to work with you. So that night that I got the script, so you know I wrote a whole bunch of notes, all that shit of what I think. I had a whole thing, so I'm in there, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, we got the vibe and they liked my energy and that, you know, I, I guess I landed the job, you know what I'm saying? Well, you went from comedy consultant to an actual cast member. 
Yeah, so how that shit kind of came about um, when we did the table read uh, for the film, uh, Reggie Miller, he he couldn't make it. The basketball player? Yeah, the end of the movie, yeah. So we was at the table read, me, Shaq, Kyrie, Chris Webber, Lisa Leslie, uh, Rail. Was Tiffany there? No, Tiffany Haddish. No, she wasn't there that day. But everybody was there, uh, the president of Lionsgate, all these people. And I did uh, the particular character, the character's name is Lights, that's Reggie's character, but I did it in like a specific like character voice. And so when I read everybody laughing and shit, and so they're like, hey, LeVar, man, if you see a part you would like, let us know. I was like, I said, oh, well, I surely will. <laughs> <laughs> I surely will, because they was like, shit, could he play lights? But I'm I'm too short. I'm not a hooper. You know what I oh. mean? So, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that so was that. Just because you were funny in the room, they booked you apart. Pretty much. Just being talented. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it was surreal. Because I was like, man, they bullshit. And I'm like, are you serious? So I was like, when they bought it to me, I was like, man, I would love to... Um, you know, audition or whatever, you know, for yeah. a role, you know. Oh, LaFar, we're not gonna make you audition, man. We got you. Like, really? I was like, fuck, man. Like, you know what I mean? So I read the script, I was like, yo, I think this would be perfect. This this footlocker manager that I'm playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, what was the I, mean. I know like Shaq likes to clown around a lot and you've you've been on his tour and yeah, like you've yeah. done a bunch of roasting sessions. What was yeah. it like working with all those NBA players? It was cool, man. I roasted the shit out of all of them. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? We talked shit. <laughs> it was cool, dog. Like, you know, uh, set on set with Kyrie. Um, and I got to know Kyrie. And I just from talking to him and feeling his energy, uh, when we found out he was going to Boston, because we found that shit out during the film. Whoa. You know what I mean? I knew Boston would go far. I mean, because... For him to be young like that, he's 25, man. He's so level-headed and so mature on the inside. And it's crazy because he's playing Uncle Drew, this 80-year-old man. He is really Uncle Drew on the inside, bro. Interesting. That motherfucker's Uncle Drew on the inside. Like, yeah. he's a, he's like really like an old wise man, dog. Like, mm -hmm. because I mean, learn? if I'm 25 and I'm fucking Kyrie Irving, yo. <laughs> yo, yo, my 30 for 30 is going to be crazy. Like, I'm going to go <laughs> fucking crazy. I'm going to go crazy. That's a lot of power. That's a lot of fucking power. You got all this money. You're famous. You're the number one guard. You know, the cold ass guard in the NBA. Yeah. You're going to lose your shit. Most guys are going to lose their shit, man. You know what I'm saying? But this guy, he a champion, bro. He's a champion. And to see the Celtics, and I tweeted, people called me fucking crazy. Hmm. And matter of fact, I put it on my Instagram, and everybody, cause, cause I'm, a, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a huge like mm. basketball guru where I know all it, but I just had a feeling the Celtics would go far. So on January 21st, I wrote at 12:53 a.m. This is what I wrote: The Celtics will beat Cleveland and win the Eastern Conference Finals. Remember where you heard it first. I tweeted that shit. Everybody cussed me out. Said I was fucking insane. <laughs> now look, two and zero, baby. Ooh. And they don't even have Kyrie or Hayward. So it was just a lucky guess. Man, I just Kyrie had a feeling, there. bro. I just, I just felt like, yeah. You know, I, I, I figured Kyrie would take him, but it, it just worked out. I guess you know what I'm saying. What did you learn specifically from him? Like he's wise. Did he have any? Specific. I mean, it's just his insights. level. It's just his level of focus. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just um, Kobe is his mentor. It's just his level of focus, and um, you know, we talked about him leaving. Uh, you know, leaving Cleveland because he wanted you know be his own man and create his own kingdom, and it was just commendable, bro. Because you think about the league now, everybody want to be on this. Fucking star team. Super teams Everybody want to be on the on the fucking super team and yeah. not really build they shit. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, I love this dude, man. You know what I mean? Because that's a '90s kind of 
You know what I mean? Jordan stayed with the fucking Bulls. Right, you had Jordan. Right, right. You had Magic. You had Bird. You know what I mean? All these people, the franchise players. If you didn't, it wasn't fucking Jordan, Magic, and Bird on one fucking team. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's kind of whack. You know what I'm saying? But but the the movie you did is kind of a superstar team it as is, well, bro. man. Like Lil Rel, Tiffany Haddish, Nick Kroll, yeah. you, Lamar I, Walker, yeah, Mike Epps. Mike Epps? <laughs> no. Yeah, no, man. Mike not. Epps in the movie. <laughs> yeah, we good, man. We, made, we good yeah, now? We good. What happened? We talked, man. We just talked and uh, <laughs> we cool, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we good. We good, man. We we spoke on it and shit. After that, we, you know, it's whatever. Was this the first time you had seen him since the- Yeah, uh, man. What? Was on set? Yeah, yeah it was on set. <laughs> Damn. Last time I saw you, you had me laid out on the Ferrari. What? What's yeah, up, man? man? Is that what yeah, you? Man. I mean, it was. What happened, man? You know, it was quiet the first day, <laughs> but then the next day, that nigga was like, "What up, man?" And I looked and stared. I'm like, "What's up, man?" And we talked about it, and I said, "Look, man, I, you know, I told him. I said, listen, I'm a fan. You, you know what I mean, and." As far as the joke, because because he said, listen, I, it wasn't my intentions for you to get beat up. And the, and the motherfuckers jumped me and all that shit, but it's cool, whatever. Um, so we we talked, and uh, he was just, I said, look, you know, as far as the joke is concerned, I'm just doing jokes, bro. I'm a comedian. You know what I'm saying? And... Um, you know, he was like, my bad, you know, whatever, whatever. <laughs> my bad for beating you up. I mean, <laughs> and I'm going to say this, you know what I'm saying? He didn't he didn't hit me. All right? right, right, right. His people did. But all I saw was that motherfucker. That, that's it. So I'm right. going to the police. I'm telling on you, sir. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm going to keep it a buck. So he told me it wasn't his intentions for that to happen. I accept it. Fuck it. I'm moving on. I'm not gonna harbor hate, no ill will. We good. Me and that man dapped. You know what I'm saying? We talked about the Richard Pryor movie shit. Oh yeah. We good. So that's it. Shout out to him. You know what I'm saying? How long was the conversation? Man, we talked for a minute. We was on fucking set. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah, was yeah. like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like we was on set, bro. So yeah, it wasn't nothing, you know. Who who initiated it? Oh, he he, he came approved. and approached me because okay. we didn't we didn't speak the first day. You just saw each other and you're like, yeah, oh, I was like, I'm standing the, the fuck out the way. I don't want, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want no smoke. I'm just here to work, baby. Right, I'm here right, to get right. my check and assist on the film. That's all I'm here to do. Yeah, I'm just the consultant. I'm the consultant, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, the second day, man, he kind of looked at me and I looked away. I was like, oh shit. And, <laughs> And then I was walking outside, and he was like, um, all I heard was, hey, LeVar, man, you a writer? And I looked, I said, what up, Mike, man? What's happening? And he looked, and we just talked, man. It was good. It was good. It was big of him, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, fuck with me or whatever, and we good. So I'm just glad that was able to come full circle, mm. and I could let any ill will, the negative feelings that I had go. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, a lot of comedians that were hating during that time, as you remember. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of them just said things like, man, all he gonna, because I read the Facebook posts that a lot of them had. You know, I, I had like, during that time in 2014, I had shut my Facebook down, but I could still see what people were saying. And, you know, it was crazy because a lot of them were like, oh, he, first, it was a snitch. I was a snitch, labeled a snitch because I called the police. And for getting course, beat up. Right. That's right. what I'm going to do. Okay. You know? I'm not a street nigga. I don't sell dope, nothing. So I'm You are from the streets though. Don't I mean, South Side the Chicago. South Side Chicago, but I, I I you know, I was in that shit, but I had mom and dad. I went to college, you know what I mean? Right. So I was a snitch. Um <laughs> another one I got, I never get. Oh, 
he ain't gonna never make it now. All he'll be remembered as a dude that got his ass whooped by Mike Epps. That was another one. You um, remember who said these things too? Oh, I remember, but I'm not gonna give them any light. Right, you right. Know what I'm saying, and you know, I'm behind the curtain, so it it might get rough for them, but they'll never know why. <laughs> That's crazy, right? <laughs> but listen, so <laughs> you know, I read all of that. And the way God works, and God is a, I'm gonna use my passive voice, God is such a mighty God that y'all can check me out in my first movie with uh, with Mike. Let him use and you. A lot, let him Won't use he you. do it. And a lot of times, comics, you know, when things happen to us, you know, especially when you, are, you know, if you, some shit go down with a comedian that's bigger or some type of celebrity or some shit, you know, and, Y'all want to go kissing ass and thinking you're going to get on tour with a motherfucker because you turned on your brother. Learn from this. Just mm. now look. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know. Maybe y'all are getting the movie with him. I doubt it. But it is what it is. So, Congratulations. I, I did not know you guys had reconciled. We good. You, see the, you know, we, it was on Comedy Hype. No, I didn't yeah, see that. Good, man. No, wow. We good. Man. You just never know. You think I'm about to be in this cool movie, and then you ended up, yeah, getting a uh, full circle. Full circle. You ain't got no haters. You ain't popping, popping though. That's right. But that was a dark time, bro. You got low. I got low. I, I was hurt. I was distraught, and the mental, more than anything, hurt way more than the physical. I didn't know what I could trust. I'm like, I'm doing good. You know what I mean? Yeah. My shit was popping. You know what I mean? I was torn with the Plastic Cup Boys and the Shaq All-Star Comedy shit. And, you know, I one mill a lot. You know, I was just doing so much shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of slowed me down a little bit. I had to take a step back. You know what I mean? But I think it just exposed, like, a lot of snakes, number one. And it also... It it, it, it kind of showed me how to, uh, to be in the game and move a little differently. Mm. You know what I'm saying? How so? Just being more strategic and um, just knowing that. I mean, people got feelings, and I, you know, I my tongue is very powerful. So even with the joke with, with Mike, and you know, we talked about it, and he told me why he was upset or whatever. At that time, he said he was going through some shit. And, um, you know, just knowing how powerful I am in my words and how great I am. That's <laughs> like I have to. Tell us more. I'm about like Spider Man, Man, bro. Word? Yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. So I just have to be more mindful and I just, I'm, I need to move different. You know what I'm saying? What is your greatest power? Roasting. Roasting. Roasting and fucking imitating people and mimicking people. Yeah. In those glasses? And then using that, it can hurt people, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. It can hurt their feelings. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For sure, so, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to make fun of your glasses there. I'm sorry. What's wrong with my glasses? Nothing. You, you don't yeah. feel them? No, you just said you're king of roasting, and I was like, in those glasses? You can roast just, me, I mean. Nah, I'm not. We don't need it. <laughs> we'll do it for a check. I'm done roasting for pro nah, bono. Nah, I, I haven't been roasting, man. I don't I like. Haven't I haven't either. been doing this shit lately. I, lo- yeah, I noticed that roasting, like... And I don't know if I said this on the last podcast. You know, guys want to come out of a bag on you if you say some silly shit. <laughs> like, I forgot I just talked about your shirt. And this nigga like, oh, fuck you, man. You think you the shit, dog? No, no, no. like, nigga, I just said your shirt, bro. Like, where is this coming from? So, you know what I mean? People are sensitive, man. Yeah, man. So what else did you learn from, because we kind of just, I wanted to get into the movie side of it because you're on this big feature film. You're with Lil Rel. You're working with Tiffany Haddish. Like, what are some, you mentioned that gave you a perspective on like the hard work that goes into a movie. Like what are specific things you learned from even being around this level of really success? Who are you just talking about specifically being on, uh, on a shoot or on a film? It could what? just be like being around these people. You can sometimes pick up on their habits or certain professionalism. As far as like Rail and Tiffany mm-hmm. are concerned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just... As far as Rail and Tiffany is concerned, it's their time, right? I mean, they put the work in and the uh, they're bearing uh, the fruits of their labor. Mm. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's, there's nobody that can block that. And uh, it's commendable, you know, to see them shining. And it inspired me. It inspired the fuck out of me. You know, being around that shit. I, I said, dude, it was surreal because I talked to Rail back like in 2011. It was 2011, 2012. Because <clears throat> Rarely quit jokes and notes. He used to host a comedy club in Chicago. In Chicago, yeah. So I called him. I said, yo. I said, why you quit? Man, it's time, Joe. I'm about to be a star, fam. I said, word. He said, yeah, Joe. I'm about to be a fucking star. Fuck that shit, Joe. I was like, all right. You know what I'm saying? All right, fam. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I mean, to see, you know, from that to now, is just a test a testimony of, you know, your beliefs, your words, and your thoughts, mm -hmm. man, are just fucking powerful, and it's amazing uh, to see his transition. This motherfucker's a superstar now. Yeah, I mean, industry wide, like it's it's amazing. You know what I'm saying? So it just charged me up. I'm I could I couldn't be more happy for the both of them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? people who got it the right way or like the right, the long way. Right. You and, could even, say. and even, you know, with the Mike situation, you know, even before Rail was really popping, you know, he had spoke out about this shit on Twitter. Spoke out about what? About how wrong that shit was. You know, when a lot of motherfuckers oh. were scared, I mean, because this is my real friend, this is my friend, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he spoke up and he was voiceful about that shit. Like, it's some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, he's my friend, man. So I'm happy for him, bro. And for him to throw me that opportunity was was commendable. Yeah, two thirty in the morning, like yeah, bro. It, that's like, this job a lot, never sleeps. A lot of people don't. You know, you know how comedy is. A lot of comedians don't want to reach back a lot of times mm. and throw somebody the ball like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, it would be he. It would have been nothing for him to be like. Nah, fuck that shit. Just had me on set looking around, looking crazy to see all of it. But he gave me a job. You yeah. Know what I mean? So, damn, I can't do nothing but applaud him. You know what I mean? Is that part of your strategy right now in that you're generating as much content as possible? Because Dude, when because that I, pops. Because I think that, well, I've been kind of, you know, documenting, doing my videos and being consistent and shit. But, yeah, you know, the the... Special is coming out on Kevin's network in June, and then the okay. movie drops June 29th. So, you know, right now, bits of my special is playing on Sirius XM radio. Um, so you just, you know, with that shit going anywhere, people they look they they like you, uh, they hear some shit, they like they Google, and they see who you are, mm -hmm. and that's that's a way to introduce yourself. To your fans. Right. You know what I'm saying? Other people. So I really, you know, like you were saying, like how you try to analyze things, you know, I think people just want to see you. Like, I don't, I don't necessarily know, like, they, they just want to see you. Talk to them. You know what I mean? In every video, I, I get it. Some of my videos are shit. Oh, so what? Do another. Because it's like, you almost see what is trending and then you just talk into the camera about it and right. then it pops. Some do. That's some the don't. formula, I guess. Yeah, some do and some don't. Yeah. Some of the shit ain't nothing. You know, I might throw one out. Just like doing stand up. Every joke right. don't hit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You just keep going. You know what I'm saying? So All right. Well, all right then. But yeah, um, and then too, let me see. Yeah, with Tiffany, man, her rise is fucking crazy, man. Like being there, I'm like, God damn, you motherfuckers superstars, man. Yeah, yeah. Cause it was so crazy the night I got attacked or beat up. I hugged Tiffany right before I walked out there and that shit happened. Oh, she was at Uptown when that yeah, went off? Yeah, she was at Uptown. Wow, night. sounds like they were all, you probably thought it was a reunion. You're like, oh man, am I gonna get jumped again? <laughs> is that why Mike is on set? Is this true? Like show? it was like, damn, that was crazy. Cause wow. I hugged her, walked outside, bloop, bloop. Yeah, bro. She may have been in on it. You nah, know, the kiss of death. Nah. <laughs> It was just that one of them things. Yeah. Man. man. So working with her now, are there are there specific are there specific traits of these people you've worked with? Like you being around people at a higher level, are there specific traits I, I they have that others feel 
it's a work ethic and mm. a belief system. Okay. You have to know you're a star and you have to be a star now and walk and talk it and, and, and let the world know. Like, I'm, I'm here. I'm famous now. You just don't know it. The world don't know it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've seen that in certain trades, even of other comics, even outside of that, who, are, who have ascended. That has been the common denominator. It's a belief, bro. That shit, it's a belief, man. As corny as this shit sounds, it's the truth. That is the common denominator I see in all of them, bro. They just very sure of themselves, no self-doubt. It's a belief. And even to fortify that belief, do you do like visualization or journaling or do you do anything to kind of nurture that? Or is it all just within, you just think it all the time? I think you got to think it, bro. Because you got to think it and you got to watch what you speak. Because, you know, the things that you speak and the things that you say, when you say it repeatedly, it goes in the subconscious thought. And once you get into the subconscious you don't believe it anymore. You look, dig what I'm saying? Because I've heard some people will like the first thing they do in the morning, because I'll look at the habits of even like, not even just people in the comedy or entertainment, but like CEOs and real, just really high level people across the board in the world. And a lot of their morning ritual is, well, one exercise seems to be a common denominator, but then also some sort of appreciation they take like time to journal about what they're appreciative for or what's going well or what they want to happen and they kind of like you just said repeating it they almost say it out loud some people will like i'm gonna i'm gonna make this amount of money by this time i'm gonna and they'll just like repeat it or write it and just and focus on that shit. yeah because i mean people you know whether people believe in what i'm saying or not you know most people you know you tend to worry you tend to panic and you focus on lack. I'm on, doing that right now. What you fucking yeah. don't have. Yeah. And you bring it right on into <laughs> you bring it right on into fruition. <laughs> like you focus it on the fucking problem when you could focus on greatness, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a choice. It's like you gotta be aware one of what you're thinking about and then how to shift it. Like I go through but but I mean Phases. we all human. Yeah. Don't get me twisted. I'm not no motherfucker just uh like I, I'm up and down with this shit, but I yeah. have to fight to, you know, get myself back, you know, and taming my mind and molding my mind and dealing with the unknown because I think that's the biggest thing with doing stand up or doing entertainment is there there's so many variables and we deal with so much of the unknown. Mm -hmm. So it's so easy to 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 get down but you just have to stay the course. So it's almost like navigating a ship in murky waters. <laughs> you know what I mean? You see the lighthouse. You got to keep your eyes on that goddamn lighthouse. If you go looking at that water and them sharks and shit, it's a wrap. Just eye on now the now you ain't even steering the motherfucker no more. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, bro. Okay. That's where I'm at with this shit right now, man. So we we'll keep working. And I believe, like, and I tell any comic this shit, man, listen, it's no reason you you got to use this. You got to use this shit, man. You have to. You have to put something out to the world and create something. And don't be so hard on yourself. Just put the shit out. Whether it get one, one view, it takes one view to get to a million motherfucking views either way. Just one share so think, can pop yeah, it off. Yeah, I think we, we should stop being so hard on ourselves and just put the shit out, man. Just get it out. Mm -hmm. Get it out. You know what I mean? Like, that's the main thing. You're going to get depressed if you sit up and you, fuck, ah, then you don't do shit. Now you more depressed. Because you didn't do shit. You took no action. Yeah. And, you know, with a lot of comics, we tend to only work at night. Fuck, what you doing in the morning? Yep. What are you doing? For eight to, for fucking 14 hours, you know what I mean? 8 a.m. to 10 at night. You go out at night. What are you doing? It's a lot of comics. It's called show business, and the show is a job, and the business is a job. This shit is the business, bro. The phone is the business? Yeah, man, because you you getting impressions. You're getting people to know you. Right. 
So like, you know, if I look at my analytics on my IG, um, damn, I don't know if y'all got Wi-Fi in here or what, but it's not pulling up. Yeah, there is Wi-Fi. But um, I want to just go over my analytics. But for instance, like, <clears throat> if you look at your impressions or your reach, you know, in seven days, you know what I'm saying, I might have reached 450,000 people. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? Like, I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, you know, off of 35,000 followers. a video does 50-something thousand views, bro, that's 50,000 motherfuckers. Who the fuck is this? Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? So it's it's important. And, yeah. you know, every video won't do that, but just the doing every day consistently, you, you know, you showing up. And that's the key. You post every single day. Every goddamn day. I'm going to leave in post. Word. YouTube, too. And y'all make sure y'all check out my podcast, The LeVar Walker Show. Uh, every day I do a daily podcast. Check it out. Yeah, let them know. Point at them. Let them know. Hey, check me out. Oh, I got to look dead in the camera. Check me out. LeVar Walker Daily Podcast Boom. Show. Come on over. Check me out. Well, I appreciate you doing this, man. This is this was great. You were like the best interviewer, bro. You think so? Oh, and last time you uh, you made fun of me for having notes. Look, no notes now. You good, bro? We, you, we you, you. you consistent. Yeah, every week, like you, every Monday. Like think about it when you first started. If you probably look at your listen to your old podcast, they was probably you shitty. Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but with that consistency, you you getting better. Yeah. It's just like. With stand up, you know what I mean? Fucking times I got booed. Mom. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like too, fell yeah. on my fucking face. But now, fuck all right, what? Come on, man. 45 minutes, I'm gonna kill that shit. <laughs> Theater, whatever. Like that's that's my str like I'm just doing all this shit just to get people to have some interest to come see me. Right. Whereas before. At the time we were coming up back in 2000, early 2090s, it was a surprise to see a comic. Like, people would be like, uh, they would come out like, it, co comedy was scary. Like, who is this guy? What he going to do? You know what I mean? And then you kill him. Oh, this motherfucker was fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. It was a huge element of surprise. surprise. Whereas now... With so many motherfuckers on this social media and shit, they know who they want to see. They don't even give a fuck. They know you know. what they're going to get. Right. You know I mean, even if you, you could probably come out and still wow a crowd, but how are you leaving an impact? You know what I mean? So now, at least now if I go pop up and on a show and people don't know me, I hit them. That guy was funny. They might remember my name, small percentage of them, but then what they do, get on the phone, and I'm right there. Yeah. Here I am. Every day. I'm on Instagram. I don't know, he got a podcast. He had a podcast. He had all that shit. He's, I'm in this shit to win, man. I feel you, man. That's why I wanted to interview you now because in June you have you have the movie coming out and you also have the LOL Network yes. Kevin Hart special coming yes. out. So it's like you're you're about to. It seems yeah. like you're about to hit another gear here. Yes. And you're doing the prep work now. Oh, putting it down. And I've been doing this shit all year mm -hmm. so this is not like i just start but like probably like in november i kept you know putting out putting out, putting out you know what i mean so and you just saw gradual growth saw some growth yeah and you when you look at your analytics you're like okay well this video jumped off okay i mean just do more like that and then you just started you followed your analytics to what was working and then just kept doing what was working and got rid of the other Well, I wasn't following the analytics at first, but I'm like, you know what, fuck this. Let me stick to kind of, you know, what they like. What they like. Right. And it's the split screen talking. That's which is almost like, like a template. For me. On yes, Instagram. I mean, for me at least. I mean, I yeah. know more people are doing it, but shit, I've been doing it for a minute and I just try to Stick. Are you doing videos on there? Or you Not doing? really. I went through a little phase, but now I'm shifting my energy towards the podcast more. Really? Yeah, like I've uh I mean with this digital medium and this visual, you know, you should win. Bro. Yeah, like the, the podcasting is booming right now. And I feel like I've put in enough groundwork to now as long as I can just bring the what, proper awareness. What are you averaging you know? per episode as far as listenership? Like fifteen hundred a week. That's really good. But Brandon. when you look, oh, won't he do it? How how much was how many listens did you have the very first episode? Oh my gosh, I don't even. I honestly don't even remember. 
I can't even, I really can't even remember. I mean, I remember seeing it like in the 50s and like, oh yeah, we're in the 50s. That's dope. Like, man. so the growth has been gradual, but it's been, like you said, steady. And I've been posting consistently, which I think helps. And now me just adding a new dimension of the video, but then also just trying to, I just, podcasting is a, it's a very interesting medium right now that a lot of people are trying to get into. So I feel like if I can just stay one step ahead of like the new people and like not get caught up in that wave, but then keep doing what I'm doing and get in front of the right people. I think the product is quality. It's just missing the, the numbers right now that you can really convert into not only fans, but also ads as well in the long run people wanting to pay to listen yeah i think with your ig uh with, with this youtube bro it's just a matter of time yeah yeah you're gonna get some huge comic to come in here and uh shit gonna go crazy well i appreciate you man no it's gonna go crazy i, I feel it man oh. just like i knew the sales was only i know it it's gonna you're gonna be out of here bro is it this year I don't know do necessarily feel? what year, uh, but I, okay. I feel it. I don't know. I mean, but I know it's coming. Okay. I feel that. I do. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. This is even one of those days where, like, I've been having a lot of positive momentum, and then today I was just like, ugh. Like, you know, the the highs and lows, I just having kind of a rainy day. So you're saying like that, you really. It's just like when you gym, shit. You're working out consistently. These days you got a shitty workout. But the whole key is to get back up and do it again. Yeah, consistency. That's the key. Preach. That's it. Consistency, bro. Well, um, this has been another consistently good podcast, dude. I appreciate your time in doing this. Yeah, this was amazing. And showing up early. I I don't I I don't even know who I'm sitting with anymore. It's like oh, you're wow. a professional now. <laughs> Thank you, man. You, you know, I'm putting, out with, oh. I'm putting a lot into this shit now, so you know, I got a lot on the line, baby. So I got to be more professional. Shit. Well, time is a big one. That's a big X factor that. A lot of people overlook, so I appreciate time. It. time, respecting people's time. Oh, yeah. yeah, like like you said, uh, like being on set is like a lot of hurry up and waiting. They're like, we need you on set at seven, and then you don't film anything till two in the afternoon. Yeah, you're like, bro. bruh, six, six. five a.m. Like especially, you know, with the players on the like, because they had to sit in heavy prosthetics, you know, to put all that old Ooh, man makeup and shit yeah. on. Yeah, so they would have to get there maybe at. Like Kyrie had to sit in five hours of goddamn makeup. Every time? Yeah, bro. So he would get there probably like 5 a.m. And his call time might be 10. Because you got to put all that shit on. Yeah. And he'd leave, he had to take all that shit off. So, and it wasn't just him. It was him. He was in prosthetics. Nate Robinson in prosthetics. Lisa Leslie. Uh, Reggie Miller. Shaq. And Chris Webber, bro. So they had to sit through it. Like, it's, Ew. and then it's hot as fuck. Yes. They got all this shit on. It's hot. <laughs> Couple of them goddamn scenes, it was like 130, like, it felt like 130 degrees. We were shooting that shit, bro. And they older. They a little bit older, folks. They older, bro. And it's like, when you shoot, uh, you know, on the movie shoot, like, if they shooting us talking. So they gonna shoot from this way. Mm hmm. We gotta do this shit like 10 different times. This way, they coming from this angle. They coming from over my shoulder. They coming from over your shoulder. Like, and you you redoing the scene on each shot. Yeah, like, I get that coverage. Yeah. Yeah. And you gotta keep talking, talk through the lines again. You know, it's like, fuck, that's each frame. Every frame. So. Very time consuming. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Oh, fucking right. I, yeah. I can't wait to see the finished product. I can't either, this man. Movie, bro. This is, this is going to be a perfectly timed episode. And you're throwing out the first pitch. Yes. At Chicago White Sox, too. Yes, man. That's going to be yes, dope. Yes, I'm throwing out the first pitch, May 21st, White Sox versus Oreos um, at the White Sox Stadium. I forgot. I know they changed the name of it, but yeah. You going to try to mess up so you can get viral? You going to try to do something crazy? You know what? I think I'm going to try to throw that motherfucker for real, for oh, real. Like, yeah. but I'm shitty, so it's <laughs> going to come out great, you know? But I can't lose in this situation. I mean, because people say, man, you practice? I ain't practicing shit. If it's a horrible throw, come on. Yeah, you're going to 50 cent them. Just let it yeah, shot put people it. People going to roast the fuck out of me. Man, yeah. that'll be perfect. <laughs>
<laughs> well, this has been perfect, dude. I appreciate you sitting down with me. Is uh, Before we get out of here, is there anything else you want the world to know? Stay tuned, people. We on a, we on a ride. We on the magic carpet ride right now. So just stay tuned. I got more shit coming. And and I've only just begun. That's, 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 that's what I tell them. And the law, all the uh, social media and all that? Everything is LeVar Walker. Uh, Instagram, LeVar Walker. Twitter, LeVar Walker. Facebook, LeVar Walker. Uh, everything is LeVar Walker. So check it out. We out here. LeVar Walker. Man, hey, well, thank you guys. Hot thank breath. You, hot breathers. Hot brethren and sistren. We'll be back again. My That's man. My dog. Take care, man. Already. Thank you.